over here in Freehold at the Barnes and Nobles, and I asked them about your book, and they said the supervisor, who's not in today, I don't know if that's a lie, says that he doesn't want that book in his store. <laughs> he sounds very liberal, doesn't he? Yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot of liberals. He will not have that book in my store! There are no such conservative books in my store! I am a concern. I'm a liberal! I believe in free speech and the First Amendment as long as I don't like the book! I'm from Lakewood, which is about 12 miles from Frio, and that's a real liberal town. And it's a it's sanctuary city, too. Lakewood, New Jersey. They call it yeah, well, real. I wonder what they're so afraid of that they don't want a certain book. Next, they may be burning books outside that Barnes & Noble in a, in, a, in a funeral pyre. Any book that the, the manager doesn't like. Okay, David, free copy of Government Zero goes out to you. That opens up one line. Here's another one. Can't find it. Jose, KSFO. Go ahead, Jose. Experience, please. I had a hard time looking for the book yesterday. I went to two Walmarts, two Targets. I went to Barnes & Nobles here in the East Bay, and I could not find it. Spoke with the, the East Peter. Bay? The East Bay, you mean in the area of Oakland, California, and Berkeley, California? No, more like uh, in Hayward and Union City. Well, Haywood's a kind of mixed community in terms of uh, politics, isn't it? There's an awful lot of conservatives in Haywood. Uh, it, it's a mixed bag, but it's still pretty much democratic. It's and well, and they ban book and they ban books that challenge their their uh, one party system. They, they sure do. They they banned it last night. Well, I'll send you a free copy, and maybe you can uh, motivate the individuals in the stores to be Americans instead of Nazi fascists. Ask them if they'd like to burn conservative books next. Uh, let's see. Last caller for this moment on this subject. Warren on WJR. Then we're going to go on to the news of the day again. Go ahead, Warren. What's your experience? Dr. Savage, it's absolutely an honor to speak with you and also a pleasure to find another product of the University of California system who's actually right-thinking conservative. I just Thank you. Left Barnes & Noble in Plymouth, Michigan, which is just just east of the Eagle town of Ann Arbor, and was happy to find your book on the um, uh, octagonal table. However, it was next to a copy of um, Whoopi Goldberg's book. All the same, while checking out... Oh, Whoopi Goldberg is a great intellectual genius, as you know. She's been ahead of the me mental curve ever since she appeared on the scene. She has such great ideas that I'm certain the book will sell at least 300 copies nationally. Absolutely, as long as she pays people to buy it. Anyway... While checking out the 220-somethings at the counter, um, the one young woman who's checking me out, um, uh, I think for the book, and the gentleman next to her also for the same 20-something um, uh, age comedy goes, people are buying that? To which she responded, I was very pleased. She goes, yes, several gentlemen have been buying that today. So I was very happy to... Oh, you mean they're shocked that people would buy that? The superior virtue of the illiberal, huh? People would buy that? People would buy that. They're so superior, but they can't challenge arguments because they don't have any. Yeah. All right, my friend. Thank you very much for supporting the show. That brings us to 145 and 53 seconds on the West Coast. And as you well know, that means there's only about 10 minutes left of the show in the markets that only take two hours of the show. I'm still lobbying, by the way, to get three hours in, in some, some markets because they really don't like the fact that they lose me for that third hour, but that's the name of the game. Things may change. The phone number is 855-47282. Grab a line. I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O. You know, you say, what is the battle you're fighting? There's a, a few examples that will spell it out. And no better example can be found than the dunces who pass for commentators on MSNBC... Perhaps the greatest example occurred the other day when an MSNBC host who is by all definition brain dead says that when someone uses the term hard worker, they're being racist because it demeans the experience of slaves. This shows you how far the nation has fallen and how morons, absolute morons, are being given degrees out of universities, but worse yet, appointed to the airwaves by NBC, a once great peacock network. Listen now to clip number two, and you will hear what stupidity now passes for liberalism. Go ahead in two. But let's be fair. If there's somebody who is a hard worker, 
when he goes to Washington is Paul Ryan. Alfonso, I feel you, but, but I just want to I, I pause on one thing, because I, I don't disagree with you that I actually think Mr. Ryan is a great choice for this role. But I want us to be super careful when we use the language hard worker, because I mean, I actually keep um, an image of um, folks working in cotton fields on my mm -hmm. office wall, because it is a reminder about what hard work looks like. So I feel you that he's a hard worker. I, I do. But in the context of relative privilege, and I just want to point out that when you talk about work-life balance and being a hard worker, is, the moms who okay, don't have health right care. Now, if this is not the definition of insanity, tell me what the definition of insanity is that a person actually thinks that using the word hard worker is racist because it doesn't refer to cotton fields. I rest my case. This is how far the country has fallen. This is what our battle is. Our battle is to save our children from psychotics like this. That's why I wrote Government Zero. That's why I broadcast every day. I have a granddaughter. She doesn't listen to the show. She's only two years old. God bless her. She doesn't live anywhere near me. I hope one day I get the opportunity to leave her a full set of all of my books. First editions, signed by Grandpa, whatever. I hope I'm still alive when she can understand them. And talk to her. I don't know how it's going to turn out. I really don't know. I don't know what. When you have morons like this on MSNBC passing for a commentator, hired, no doubt, by the dunce of dunces, Pill Griffin. Pill Griffin has to be stupider than her. Think about the man at the network, Pill Griffin, who hired Melissa Harris Perry. Think about how dumb Pill Griffin must be. Think about how his brain must be cooked. And by the way, now think about the people who own NBC, why they would let a dunce like this on the air after a statement like that. And so I rest my case. One of the chapters in Government Zero is called Zero Education. Apparently, Melissa Paris, whatever her real name is, I don't know, nor do I care. She'll be lost to the air eventually. No one will remember her ever with this kind of idiocy. Obviously, she's bulled her way into this position with the mumbo jumbo, you know. All they got to do is talk about something to do with uh, some experience of an ancestor who she never met and act like she herself personally experienced slavery. And right away, she's made into a broadcaster. That's all. I have never benefited from affirmative action. In fact, I've been persecuted because of affirmative action. And it's made me tougher and it's made me smarter. And that which does not kill you makes you much stronger. Let me tell you that. It made me much stronger. Strong enough to be here every day, three hours a day on the Savage Nation and to write one blockbuster after another. I want to thank you if you're leaving us now, and I welcome you if you're staying with us now. This is Michael Savage of the Savage Nation, back in a moment, right here on your local affiliate. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. Welcome to the Savage Nation, 855-407-282 is the phone number, michaelsavage.com is the website, Government Zero is the great new blockbuster, and the news is, well, zero. It's like zero news. I may as well do a chapter called Zero News. What is the news? Let's see, a Hollywood slut fell on her on a banana peel in Hollywood, that's news. A soap opera actor punched a bartender in the nose, that's headline news on the New York Post. Uh, let's see what the news is. Not about military destruction. Not about the destruction of the children's minds in America by drugs and brainwashing, no. Of course, there is news, I guess, such as Obama's anti-ISIS war strategy has failed. Uh, everyone knows that except him. How about this for news from the Gateway Pundit? Germans panic as Muslims march throughout through a Bavarian city chanting, This is our future. Really? Isn't that interesting? So Merkel is invading her own nation with Muslims. How does that differ from invading a foreign nation? In this case, invading your own nation. How does it differ from the maniac 
of not 70 years ago. She's invading her own nation. Well, okay, I make my point. I guess it falls on dead ears. New Planned Parenthood video. Doctor wants intact fetal heads for brain harvesting. Headline, injured deer limps into hospital after being hit by car. This is an astonishing story. I mean, I'm, a, I'm an animal no lover. It's that simple. I, I feel bad for them. They're innocent. They're desperate. They're frightened all the time. A Monday afternoon, a deer limped into the emergency room in, in Rochester, New York, after being hit by a car. The animal walked into the ER room of a hospital, strong hospital. The deer managed to walk through the doors of Strong Memorial Hospital and make it about 20 feet down the hallway before being corralled by staff members. At least one of its legs was broken. And, of course, they then strapped the deer to a gurney. And, sadly, the deer had to be euthanized due to its severe injuries. Well, anyway, that's an amazing story. You think that animals are not, you know, there's a phrase, sentient creatures. There's a word, sentient creatures. It has a meaning. I mean, I eat meat, I eat fish, I eat poultry, but I'm recognizing the fact that I'm eating a living thing, and the energy of the animal is something I feel after I eat the animal. Do you know that? I get energy from the animal. That's why I eat them. I hope that they're, um, I hope that they're treated humanely when they're slaughtered. I'm not going to be a vegan or a vegetarian. I can't be. I have no energy. I start to be. I can't think. My brain is too. My, my brain is too active to live on, on vegetarian or vegan foods. Do you know that? And if you look at vegans, and I'm not knocking it, go ahead, good luck to you. Maybe you'll outlive me, maybe you won't. Most of them are emaciated. They have no energy. Their brains don't work. Not all, most. Sallow, no energy. They lack all the nutrients necessary to provide a vigorous mind with what it needs. I know you're going to call and say, I can knock you out any day. I'll date a show. I get that kind of, I get those calls. I get it. So good for you. Not for me. I've tried it. I can't I can't fast. I can't do that. In fact, right now, as I enter hour number three, I'm feeling the energy of a dead squid floating around in my brain. Now, it's true. It's only in my stomach. But I can already feel the tentacles spreading through. <laughs> and the French fries and the green peas and the gherkins. I usually uh, devour some food during breaks. Usually I have a power lunch by myself with the dog. Today it's a calamari sandwich <laughs> with green peas. No butter, please. And because I wean myself off butter, I know now it's good for you. Now it wasn't good for you. It's better than the, the polyunsaturated fat. I get the whole change. I wrote books on it. I don't even like the taste of butter. I mean, I wean myself off for 40 years. I don't need it now. I don't use any of that. I dip it in olive oil if I want an oil. So you want to talk about the news, views, reviews, whatever. Whatever. The book, the experience with the book. Here in the Bay Area, people are having... Tough time finding Government Zero in the bookstores because of the progressives who are so tolerant. The tolerant progressives are hiding the book or not ordering the book because they're tolerant and progressive. Now, they don't realize that they're such progressives. Let me tell you a story about progressives. There's a famous story in the world of explorers that goes like this. And, of course, it's a true story. I wouldn't tell it. Check it out and see if I'm making it up. There was a report in the early days of Arctic exploration by one of the exploration teams that by their own calculations, they were moving forward at a rate of three uh, miles per day. Well, as it turns out, they were on a piece of Arctic ice that had broken away from a glacier, which was actually floating south at a rate of five miles a day. So while they thought they were moving forward, at a rate of three miles a day, they're actually moving backwards at a rate of two miles a day. That's progressives for you. They think that they're moving the nation forward, but they're actually moving the nation backwards. They have destroyed race relations. They've destroyed relations with Russia. I don't have to go down the list nor the litany. You've heard me talk about it every day on the Savage Nation, but apparently common sense has a very limited audience in the United States of America. That opens up a line at 855 407 Let's go to Daryl on WBAP. Daryl, go ahead. What's your main point? Uh, yes, sir. I'd like to point out your comment about uh, deporting all the uh, aliens that are sitting in prison. Normally that would work, except for those that are from Mexico, Guatemala, Honduras, whatever. They come right back. 
it, it, there's no... Uh, there's, well, there's wait a minute. In, in my solutions to save America, I say start by deporting the criminal aliens in prisons. But that's coupled with point number one, which is seal the borders with the military. They're not coming back if you have a military on the border, are they? Oh, that's true. If you can do that, that would 